Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to a video where I'm going to talk about where I got my CD racks from. So I get asked this question all the time and partly I would say one because it's my backdrop in here, but I've made a number of videos about this, my music room, how I store my CDs, what's in my collection, all those things where you're seeing these music shelves, uh, the CD racks themselves, sort of up close and personal. And yeah, I gotta say, hey, they look pretty darn good myself, but I know you guys are interested in it, and so I constantly get asked that question. And I reply to everybody independently, and I let them know. And we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna talk about them. I'm gonna break it all down. We'll get into it here in just a bit, but before we start, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you'll stay up to date on all the cool videos that I'm putting out, just like this one where I'm talking about where I got my CD racks from. So all in all, let me just get into this right off the bat. Most of you guys out there know I'm an architect by day. My passion is music and I love making these videos and running the YouTube channel and putting all that out there for you guys. But what I went to school for, what I actually do for a living is architecture. That being said, I designed these and I had them custom built. So they're not something that you're gonna be able to go to the store and get. And I don't want that to be something sad for you guys in the sense that, oh gee, I can't go get these things. What I hope to get out of this video besides giving you an up close personal look at these racks is to explain how I designed them and why I designed them the way that I did in order to give you some information about how best to go about purchasing racks for yourself or designing and having your own custom ones made because so many of you guys out there have music rooms like mine. I can't possibly be the only person that has had custom CD shelves built, but I will explain what it is that went into my thinking and logic behind these. And again, give you some uh, close uh, personal look at these here. So let's get a little uh, resituated here and I will uh, get into that. We'll start talking about it. All right, so one of the things here that you'll notice is if you can see that there is a slope in my ceiling, I'm on the second floor of my house. And so this is actually up in what would be considered an attic space that has long since been converted into a habitable room. So I have low uh, ceiling space at the corners here, which is why they only went up as high as they did. And just in case you're interested, I do have a tape measure, so I thought I would let you guys know. These go up right now 39 and a half inches. Um, but this kind of stuff that I wanted to tell you about is more things like uh, leaving space on top of these. So I think that is a key thing in here. Uh, you got to be able to get your hand in, and when you're tilting a disc out like this, you need space to be able to do it. What it also allows for is stuff like this, meaning I've got a couple discs, they haven't been filed away yet, they belong in this area here, and they can sit on top. I also use that space for keeping out albums that I'm uh, into right now and I wanna listen to, so I pop them there and it kinda is a reminder that I've got those to listen to. But you gotta take that whole space into account. There are plenty of these that I have seen where it's like, they're very tight and they just slide straight in and straight out. But I always find those difficult, especially when they get tight this way and you can't get your fingers in between them. I have a little space here where I'm able to do that. But if you can't do that, you need to be able to pull it down from the top. So I think having the extra space here is really quite important and something worth focusing on. So for me at least, I left here, I did um, six and, and one eight inch of space in here. So a disc itself, the top part of the disc itself is just under five inches. In fact, it is seven and, or sorry, four and seven eighths high. Thing is, discs are not square, right? So the, the distance that goes this direction on it is five and a half. 
So you're always gonna have more depth that way than uh, the top of this thing. But because we want some space on top of this thing, you end up with higher space on top than you do going that way. And these are all things you wanna think about when designing your own CD racks on here. The other thing is this, I left some, some space up front on these things here where I you know, didn't want these things to be right out at the flush edge of this. Um, I didn't because in that case, you would have some that after a while might start to overhang if it's slightly bigger disc than another one, the ones that aren't jewel cases. You can see it maybe here on these where these little cardboard ones are actually smaller. So they actually gonna sit back further in here um, than the jewel cases, but there are other ones that, that actually that doesn't go there. <laughs> um, you know, they sit back a little bit, but other ones sit proud a bit. And so I wanted to give them a little bit of space and it's not too much space. I don't think I left that much. I got about a half inch, maybe if even that much, uh, that's there. Um, so all in all, leaving some space on top, leaving some space in the front of it, things like that. And also I chose not to take the top of this and go all the way up. If I'd gone all the way up to where the ceiling actually bends, I could have gotten another row of CDs and that's fine. You might choose to do that, very cool. I've on all my shelves, because if you guys know about my wall of wonder, I also stopped it from hitting the ceiling, but I've always liked to stop them to create a shelf. I like to have things on display. You can see my Slayer action figures and my great white promotional stuff and the Metallica fan cans. And I like to have a place to display things. And so the space up here, I have been displaying box sets on. So Iron Maiden and everything else, NXS, Kiss, Judas Priest, Loudness, all my little box sets get to sit on top. And for me, at least, I think that makes for a much nicer uh, music room in its appearance than just straight wall-to-wall -wall CD. So part of how I was thinking about this was how to go about uh, creating something that is the most functional, but at the same time, the most aesthetically pleasing. And remember, I'm an architect, so I am definitely thinking about those sort of things. There are ways that I certainly could have put more CD storage in, but I wanted a space that looked really nice. Uh, case in point, the wall that's behind me there could have gone up higher, but I just didn't think it would look nearly as good as keeping it one consistent height around the room and allowing me to display things on it. So that's part of why uh, what you're seeing with these CD racks are the way that they are, but these could be designed in any number of ways uh, to achieve and work out what is best for you. But I like stopping them short and having a shelf on it, which is also this part of it here. You can see that there's an indentation in here. So, sorry, you can't actually see it. Let me turn this a little bit. There you go. So this part here and this part here, um, this is a shelf which overhangs itself um, about a half of an inch and then turns down and gives an end to this thing. And the rack itself is actually set in, meaning the shelf and a frame around it, which I thought was aesthetically more pleasing to look at like that than it would have been to have just had, uh, you know, the stuff abut one another and not have a little bit of a plane change in it to create some character, to create some interest in it. So that's what you're seeing. But what that also does here is makes this double thickness. First and foremost, these are built out of three quarter inch uh, boards. I've actually built these out of birch wood because it has a better graining than say plywood, but you could also do it out of oak or out. And if you do it out of oak and you're building these yourself, make sure to do what they call clear oak, which means it doesn't have knots in it. Um, and you could do it in poplar, but that's a lot more expensive, but these are nicer woods than plywood. Anyway, the point being three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch means this is now one and a half inches thick. It is a nice, really solid top. I don't ever have to worry about it sagging and bowing over time. While these are not that heavy, over time, it would have started to sag. These shelves in here are three quarters of an inch, but I'm not worried about these sagging because they only go this distance. So I set up a distance between these 
with center dividers that are in it um, so that I don't have to worry about that. So for this here, I did these and they are 38 inches long. Now some of this spacing really just has to do with um, my space that I'm building it into. So for me to have two of these racks side by side here worked out to 38 and 38, in your space, you might go 36, 36, or you go a little more 40, 40, but you don't wanna to go too much more than that, or you might have to start worrying about the sagging of this in the middle. And I did build one in the past where I used half inch, and it didn't take long for it to sag. So I would say don't use anything less than three quarters wood when you're doing your shelf, um, and don't go too long with it because it could start to sag in there. Um, but but part of the reason for the subframe that you're seeing like this and down here is that each of these are built independent. So this is one, that's one, all the things around here are independent. They can be unscrewed, taken apart, and moved. If I ever leave here, I can take these with me. The top part, the shelf, and the part that turns down the side here, that's applied later. That's what locks it all together. So we have independently built rack, independently built rack, independently built rack, and independently built rack that I then clad over it, locking it all together. So that's why this is one piece. I didn't want to see a seam in the middle of it here on top. I wanted this to look like a countertop, a solid edge, very beautiful stained wood, everything. So the seam is in here and they're screwed together in the middle part but that way this sits on it here and then it turns over here like that. So that's how I did that. And if you can see here, there is a, a kick to the thing. I've raised it up off the floor. I didn't want this thing to just sit on the floor. I wanted it to be a bit, I'm gonna measure the part in front of me, but it's the same part you're looking at just behind me. And so this height that is here, that is four inches off of the floor, but that four inches also includes the first shelf. This part of it here sits on top of the kick, which is this part of it here, and that whole height together, four inches. So again, and you can see it there behind me in that view, but that's part of what gives this the look that it has, part of that aesthetics that I was talking about where we don't want things to be too thin. We have hierarchy in terms of design, give you a little insight into the architectural aspect of these things. But not only do we take into account structure, and function of things, but we take into account obviously aesthetics and the way things look. And so we want the perimeter of something to be its thickest element. That is the double layer of half, of three quarter, three quarter to give us a half. These are the secondary elements. This is the middle part, which shouldn't be as thick or as fat. And so it reads thinner in here and that's the three quarter. But the bottom part, it's rooted. It comes down to the ground and it needs something to sit on to look like it comes down and it stops. And that's that four inch kick that is on the bottom of that. So it looks heavy, weighted, grounded. It doesn't look like this thing is just gonna simply fall over. And so that's sort of the aesthetics and things that were taken into account in terms of constructing this thing. All in all, that's my CD racks and how it is that I put them together and created the design and then had them custom built and that's where they are here. And certainly you could take all this information that I'm doing, you could hire yourself a local mill worker, go on Facebook, you can probably find someone fairly easy. You may even have a friend that's a woodworker that would do it for you. Um, or hey, maybe you're a woodworker and you wanna do it. I'm not handy in the shop, that's why I went to school for architecture so I can draw and direct those kind of things, let other people do the building for me. But hopefully you can take that information and either create some custom shelving for yourself, or maybe you can just simply take this information and it'll help you look, you know, know what to look for when you're shopping because there's plenty of manufacturers that make these themselves and some are better than others. And if you want to know some of the qualities that are in the ones that I have that you could carry over and contribute into the ones that you're going to potentially get, this is what it is. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this uh, up-close, personal look at the CD shelves themselves, uh, what went into designing them. Uh, now you know at least where I, quote, got them from, which is custom-made. Uh, you will know how to go about it yourself. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.